Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. Uh, actually, let me just show you uh, the uh, discount voucher scene uh, screen. If you want 15% uh, off, it's the voucher code for me, it's Hi King's all. Crusher. Let's mute Chess over there. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, the voucher code uh, King's Crusher. And um, okay, uh, so that's for all streamers to be able to challenge all streamers at Chess24 on any of these uh, banter sessions. And usually, by the way, you'd you'd if you go 20 minutes early, 20 to 30 minutes early to send your challenge, then you know you're virtually guaranteed for a game challenge. So okay, let's go on to uh, to play the challenges. Okay. <clears throat> Afras, hi there. From Norway, hi there. Norway's buzzing with chess activity, so I gather because of Mag Magnus Carlsen basically has uh, helped promote hugely chess in Norway. Um, okay, let's go knight c3. Take care. That's in pawn. So will he just castle? I'm spending some time here. Is there something novel? This looks fairly standard to me, this position. I hope I haven't lost internet, have I? Hmm. <laughs> just uh, a bit worried. <laughs> just lost the internet. <laughs> ah, blimey. I'll just, I'll just put a high in the comments. Uh, I think knight e2 might have been might be an idea to avoid uh, double pawns. I think I might have played bishop g5. I think I remember a disaster game. Someone playing something at h6 and g5. I'm hoping this is more sensible. Challenge that bishop there. Queen d2, there's knight e4. That's, that's a, a nuisance. Uh, threat, isn't that Queen d2, knight e4. Uh, I don't know what's happened to my mouse wheel. Can it lock into position, please? Mouse, behave. I just want it lock. <laughs> I've got it. Uh, um, I've got the claw gaming mouse, uh, G claw. Uh, but sometimes it's a bit temperamental. Let's put this bishop here for a moment. Uh, what sort of game plan can arise here? Maybe actually, I'm wondering c3. Just for the idea of bishop c2 and queen d3 later. Uh, that's not entirely original. But in this particular position, I'm hoping it's uh, it's a bit dual purpose here. There's pressure on this d file as well. Okay, d is coming. I could uh, prepare against that. That's a bit weakening, I know, on my dark squares. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping this is... Uh, I think he's pretty solid here at the moment. Unfortunately for me, he's pretty solid. Maybe... Uh, Ah, no, no, no. That's a bit nasty. I was thinking I was going to do something like taking a knight g3. Hmm, I think he's, he's got a very good position still. I haven't got really anything from the opening. G4, G5, is that, is that a plan? That might be a plan of sorts. G4 for G5. 
um, it's difficult. G4, he just plays, say, h6, though. G4, h6. Mm. Let's see, does he play h6? This bishop a4 idea, tactically, if I can arrange that in the future. I can sneak that in with queen f4 for bishop a4. Oh, that's a sneaky move. Uh, he's got rook e2, though. So if I played king f2 first, then queen f4. Okay, I'll try king f2 first. Uh, now queen f4 here, sneaky for bishop a4 without rookie two. Sneaky tactical ideas in the absence of a plan, uh, which don't do anything. <laughs> okay, uh, I've got a god e2. Actually, I'm on the a pawn again now. I'm on the a pawn. Was he slightly concerned about bishop b3 or something? This pawn's a liability now. I could test that again. Um, just, I don't know. Maybe... maybe <laughs> no, no. If that pawn's a liability, why not just get off a pair of rooks? If this pawn really is a liability, it might actually be good to take away a pair of rooks here. Because I'm hoping it's a target for that bishop. Um, hmm. He's been solid throughout this game. There is another tactical idea that's just occurred to me of Queenie 8 one day. Or bishop h7 for queen a2. Maybe he's going to go rook a2, bishop h7 for rook queen a2. But there's also a queen e8 if the queen wasn't protecting. If everything wasn't so well protected. All right, I'll take away that d5 square, because otherwise that knight's going to go into f4. This also means bishop e4 one day. So there's a few one-day tactics to be aware of. Uh, now queen e5, rook a2, rook e2, d3, bishop d3. So maybe queen e5 is plausible. And in fact, bishop e4, there's check. If I play rook e2, then there's bishop e4 without the check. All right, so now bishop e4 is actually threatened because that's pinned. Oh, that's not very nice. That's a bit rude. <laughs> I have to exchange rooks. All right, here I'm hoping he's got no major tactic. I can pin that knight again. If I, oh. Actually, you know what? This position. Let's get the queens off. Stop ninety five. Uh, King D five coming up. This is winning now, isn't it? Nope. <laughs> uh, not quite. Now it might be. This is a lot more promising now. Finally, I've got an advantage, I believe. It's Alright, thanks for the game. Yeah, I, I didn't really find anything uh, too spectacular there to do. Thanks so much. Sebi. Hi. <clears throat> Let's play, depending on what he does, which knight. I'll play g3 against that knight, against that. I would have played f4. 
But against this, yeah, I think this is the way maybe. <coughs> Frog in the throat. F4, F5, G4, Knight, G3. This is a plan. F4, F5. Uh, G4, Knight, G3. Any Knight, G4, HG, check. Bishop, H3. Should be safe enough, I think. So this is my standard sort of plan. Sort of template for plan. Because I'm holding that D5 square against the D5 break. So the flank operation is more justified because uh, usually it's a they say it's a counter a flank attack you counter attack in the center. One thing I have got going for me is a central square lock down that d5 for a moment for a moment. So can I get away with f5? He could blockade on the dark squares for sure with knight h7. If I get my knight here, I can avoid the simplification knight e2. Let's just calculate this again. Knight g4 hg check. Bishop h3. I think that's okay. Yeah, so he's playing for the center. Will I get the move knight g3 in here? Also, this blockade stuff needs to be factored in. Will I get knight g3 in this position? If I get knight g3, I'll be a bit happier because then I I could take with a knight. I could leave a knight, nice very a very nice knight on e4 with tempo. If I got knight g3 in, is that going to happen? Though it's probably optimistic. You might mm, do other stuff. It'd be nice because my attack, my attack, my space advantage is building up. Well, it's sort of an attack as well, but it's also basically just gaining space here on the king side. So knight g3. Hmm. Let's calculate this. D takes, knight takes. Let's say knight takes, bishop takes. What would he do there? What would be the problem with my position? I think he'd lose a bit of dark square blockade, actually, without knight h7. So maybe that makes g5 later more possible. I could also try and use this g file later. All right, so I got this move. Now knight g4 hg, I should have factored in this again, but bishop h3, my king's holding the knight. Also, there's just queen takes g4 now anyway. My queen is, is able to take on g4. Okay, so I'm just quite happy here. h4, knight h7, dark square blockade. I can probably break it down. g5, hg, hg, knight g5. Oh, this is nice. We have tempo on the bishop. f6 looks crushing, looks absolutely crushing. This looks all over. Bishop e7, f6 looks all over to me. Uh, let's let's see. Bishop f6, knight f6 takes. Queen d2, king h7, bishop e4 check. Maybe there's king g7. Maybe it's not entirely all over. Do I take with the knight or the rook? Intriguing. I think I take with the rook and then queen d2 because actually that's a battery. So king h7, queen h6. Just take with the rook, queen d2. I don't see how that's defended. The knight's really good for the knight and queen coming together. You know, queen h6, knight f6. No, I don't see it. I don't see it, uh, how black defends this. I think I've reached an ideal state here. I mean, I, I just remember this. There's this Karpov game annotated in one of my books from beginning to expert or something. And he played this very controlled game with this knight e2 to g3. And it's like imprinted on my memory because it was smooth. Some of Karpov's games are just super smooth. He doesn't... The thing with Karpov games, I think they, they do commit to the memory more than Kasparov 
because Borov can be very very complicated very tactical Karpov is often smooth games and you kind of remember them the patterns for a long time okay thanks to the game uh, Sebi but yeah there was this game I could try and find it maybe another time to tell you the exact stem game I'm thinking of but there's this stem game in my head with gaining space on the king side with knight e2 to g3 I mean not not stem as in not stem as in the exact opening it's just just that pattern of gaining space on the king side this question of e d and e5 is intriguing E D or E five? That's the question. On today I'll just go for E five. I don't know. I'm in a mood for having E five. Uh okay. Gotta watch out for my bishop being uh, stranded. Now this b3, I've seen b3 in a recent Aronian game actually with the idea of c4 later. So it not only puts the brakes on, um, like here, I'm able to play knight e2 without c4. So it's not so silly b3 as you might think. Now c4 w would be, I think, actually opens up that bishop, so maybe forget that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I want to keep this bishop as the prisoner as the prisoner in the pawn chain ideally so if I ever play c4 that's going to be a wonderful bishop this is this is more controlled that bishop just kept as a prisoner in the pawn chain for a moment I'm not a number I'm a free man. The prisoner was a classic to check out. Um, series on TV. Uh, okay. So bishop b5 is also interesting. Um, that might not have been the exact quote. You'll find it. But okay. So rook c1, bishop b5 is interesting tactically. Of no of no positional significance. This this one is interesting except it runs into bishop g5 it'd be nice to like r lift the rook um a, a queen move drops c3 for the moment rook c1 bishop g5 there's f4 mm, intriguing intriguing ah the rook lift is now available without any bishop g5 Uh huh. I I want to keep a piece on if it's the queen even, because what I want to do is not have an exchange on the C file to keep some tension in this game, as in some keep some pieces on, but I am giving myself this back with pawn. So if that's staying on C three. There's queen H six here now. This pin, queen h6, c3 is protected. Although, hmm, it could be making my, um, to take away the pinner. Yeah, if I lose my queen on h6, that wouldn't be very clever. So this might not be entirely clever because of rook c3. On the other hand, uh, bishop d3, he could take. And if takes, then he takes my queen. So what about bishop d3 immediately then? So queen h6, there'll be queen h7. Without any rook c3 interruption. Let's say he plays king h8. King h8. King h8. Indeed. I don't know. King h8. Hmm. Well, this just allows queen takes h6.
G6 here. Right. I could go back to protect C3. A6 is a target as well here. The knight's holding B3. Uh, this pawn chain is just asking to be undermined with H5 now. Well, keeping this a prisoner, trying to undermine the pawn chain here. Really? Really? Oh no. <laughs> well, yeah. That is actually a good point. But there's Bishop F1. Hold on a sec. Unveiling a defense of C3. Bishop B4, Rook takes C8 is check. And then Queen takes B4. Rook takes C3. I can also play Queen takes C3. I was going to panic there. Now, if you read, if, if you follow suits, which you might do if you're UK, because uh, Meghan Markle's going to be royalty soon, so you might have checked out suits on Netflix. There, there is something, I think, for chess in suits, which literally relates to don't panic, I think. I've, I've been wondering, I always on the lookout for explanations of don't panic from all sources. And basically, in suits, it says, if you've got a gun to your head, uh, think that there are about 145 different options instead of just giving in uh, to the person. Now, in chess, um, so the opponent giving you a threat like a check, yeah, I mean, there's at least... I mean, King H2 would have been a panic reaction there. I've just And just giving in to the C3 rook. So I, I think that that is a good principle. If if you're if you're in a panic after a certain move, it's it's a way of slowing down. I, I think it's a good good saying in suits. It's a recurring one. Uh, basically, uh, give yourself the breathing space in that moment to see the spectrum of options. So you don't need to panic. And in fact, if you do, this is another thing about suits. It's like it's there's a lot of things about uh, leverage and digging out the dirt and everything and manipulating other people. But if you do, you're basically very open to manipulation. If if there's basic threats, and you can't in chess, you can either make a bigger threat, you can ignore the threat, you can accept the threat because it might in the long term damage the opponent's position. So there there are hundreds of options in chess, let alone moves. There's hundreds. There's quite a few set of different ideas in responding to a threat. Um, so definitely here okay we're getting space here on the king side queen h5 g6 and it'll always be rook e8 bishop f8 f5 for f6 isn't that pushing things too far to allow f5 f6 d5 is on my knight potentially knight h5 g6 knight f6 i can't see how f5 weighing up the downsides i think the upsides of playing for f6 is outweighing the downsides this looks like fragmented pawn structure now so at least i've isolated pawns positionally there's bonuses now positionally forget about just attacking chess i've actually just done structural damage as if i've the equivalent of doing a minority attack i've you know i've isolated pawns here so a positional goal has been achieved knight f6 is kind of weaving and mating that takes takes d4 queen h5 takes a bishop or a knight queen h6 this looks too strong this just looks too strong to have a pawn on f6 Queen g4, queen h5, 
Rook G8, Rook F4. There's a few options here, but Rook G8 seems like I want to stop it. Maybe Bishop G7 there, just to win the exchange. That might be adequate. Win the exchange. Use the g-file myself. This is a monster in way to I need to lock down b7 again, potentially. Queen g4 seems to be winning because rook g8, bishop g7 is mating. Queen g4 threatens mate. Rook g8, there's bishop g7. Thanks for the game, uh, Kremlin student. Okay, on am. I'll try and play solidly. On am's actually been very dangerous recently. This looks like fairly standard stuff yeah, on the surface. Um, although white's very, very solid here. Um, can't fault anything about my opponent's position or play at the moment. Now that well, it looks like some strange gambit. I uh, can't see the punishment immediately. <clears throat> Bango Queen E seven just for knight C four and let's get rid of this. Bishop h7 check needs to be factored in. Oh no, I've got my knight on it. I was just wondering about king h8, knight f7. Knight f4. Now knight e4 or a5, maybe a5 to start off with. And then knight e4. And you know what about this possession? I'm thinking that b4 square could be useful for bishop b4 later. But knight e4, I think that's plausible. Knight e4. There was a game I, I remember, Kasparov facing a minority attack, locked it all down. He stopped the opponent's minority attack in, in its tracks. I think he brought a knight to d6 or something to stop b5. It is something to be worried about, minority attacks. Now here, there's a possibility of chipping f2 tactically, like around about here, say with g5, knight f2, white's position might explode. Knight f2, queen e3, king f1. It's very, very tempting. There's no control of e1 there from white. It's at least three pawns. If I take d4, knight f6, knight e4. If I wrench open the f file, it's even worse. Bishop b4 is also tempting for queen d4. Uh, it means bishop f5 I can take on c3. I'll play bishop b4 to start off with. At the moment, there's no rookie one, I hope. I've got to connect my pieces, otherwise this is asking for a tactical disaster, like around here. 
with rookie one. My quit. I should have just taken that. Uh oh, rookie one. What have I done? I should have just taken on d4. I think I've wrecked this. You can take on f5 now. I've wrecked this. He's got e5 control. <clears throat> He's got E5 control, that's the real pain of this. I take on C3, can I take on F5 after? He takes on B7. Check, I think I'll take on. There might be 97 here. Rook C8. What about Rook C8 for a moment? So I'm trying to avoid. As oh, Knight F7, this is all really dangerous. C5 for Queen A4. Is that what desperate? I go down to D1 and there's Knight E4. C5 will then get mated. In the meantime, Queen A4, Queen D1. And there's Queen E6 here. If G4, that means I'm losing a piece immediately. If I can get Rook F8, I might be happy here. Rook F8, Knight E4. Rook F8 might be good. If I can get Rook F8 in. Uh huh. Bishop G6, Rook F6. Uh. Oh, Bishop G6, Rook F6. No. Rook F8 then. There might be Bishop D3 check, Queen E2 or Queen E1. I'm going to try and undermine this E5 knight. I want to try and get Bishop D3 check in. Bishop D3, and it's got E1 covered. Queen E3, okay. Might not be that significant. He's got Bishop G1 after. Unless I can calculate that. Bishop D3 and there's something I missed. King G1, Queen E3, King H1, Queen C1, Bishop G1. I don't think so. Right. 
Queen F1 for Bishop A6. Just to take this pawn. I can play for H5, G4. Too much choice. Much better than his rating. I don't know. Is he just playing me on the weekends and no one else? I don't know how this rate, honestly, I don't know how this rating exists I don't know I don't know I just felt as though I was playing I don't know someone much higher okay anyway graph thanks uh, that's like every week every week it's like that it's like playing some 20 it's like 2300 I don't know uh, but anyway thanks <clears throat> If I castle them, this should be five. Bishop C4. My castle on king h2 and then f4 this rook c4 is it doing anything F4, F takes, knight, D5. F takes, knight, D5. Queen g4 threatens queen g6. Is that worth actually playing queen g4 here? Maybe. Um, there's knight d5 as well. Forces queen d8. So I'm immediately threatening queen g6. Knight d5, queen d8, that looks like a great tempo gain. Isn't that also f takes, potentially, to win e5? So queen d8, f takes. It takes bishop d6. I'm 
Rook f2 just for doubling. Keep this locked in. Oh, As bishop h4. <clears throat> I can have double rooks. Rook in like this. No, he's got f3. While well, he's got f3 covered, that's uh, rook f2, rook f3 ruled out. Uh, knight e3 is on f7. Maybe knight e3. There's bishop h4, queen g4. Maybe knight e3 here. Yeah. I think I'm threatening bishop f7. Bishop f7. Still wish us unless oh, f five. All right, queen going back. There's only one square. I think. Again, bishop f seven. <laughs> d5 there's bishop g3 or queen g3 uh, okay I probably should play knight d5 queen d3 for g3 would trap the bishop as well as protect g3 queen d3 here the knight does shield the d-file against rook d8 so rook Queen d3, g3. Alright, if I take on f5, I think I'll take on f5 here. Alright, queen d3 around here. e4 is queen d4. Queen d3 around here. Frets g3. E4 G takes hitting his queen. There's no check because the knight's on F4. So G3 here, I believe. There's Rook G8. Rook G1. Because if takes Queen G2. So queen g2 here, knight f3. So might as well forget queen g2. Uh, knight f3, king h1. Mm, maybe that's okay anyway. As long as there's no queen, uh, that's okay anyway, surely. I want to be able to play rook g1. Right. Ninety three F four, ninety seven Rook F eight. Just do this. Oh, crikey! There's mating net material here. That's knight f4. There's king g5. It's oh, wonderful. Okay, got to be careful. Oh, 
I think I'm going to take. Uh, I don't like the look of this. Yes, that's much better. Okay, yeah, uh, I didn't want to get mated uh, with forcing moves there. Um, to be on the safe side. Okay. With um, the check and maybe the check with the pawn later, it looked too dangerous for the Rook and Knight. Right, is he ready? Okay, I might have to abort this. Five seconds, one, two, well, three, four, five, okay. Uh, friends of mine, who's very dangerous, okay. I'll try French. I'll try this without C5 to accelerate E5 pressure. Yeah. So knight C6 French. Maybe a6 from bishop d6 to avoid knight b5. If there's time, there might not be time. Yeah, rookie one, he means he threatens knight d5. Forget it. Let him have the bishop. I'll play a6, rookie one, and e6 here, rookie one, castles. All right, just to stop knight b5. Stop all this stuff with Bishop G five. Is E five possible now? I thought one of the points was to stop e5 his knight was quite good there now there's queen f2 it's pretty dangerous this looks like a ferocious position all of a sudden queen f2 knight e5 is he has he got bad into that or something have I got men into that? I'm just going to check. Hi. It seems to have. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like a dangerous position anyway. Right, I'm just taking the tail on F4 then. There's an issue of queen e4 here. Uh. Uh. Have I got queen f7 instead? Because king here, queen e4 hits f4. Queen f7 instead. Bishop f4, I take here. Uh. 
I think I might have bishop f5. I could take on f4. Hang on. I think it's putting me off with all these disconnects. What's going on here? Ah, uh, queen e4. Is it mine to that? I'm just going to check. Hi, checking. All right. All right, so he's winning his piece back. Unfortunately. Oh boy, <clears throat> it's chaos. Don't understand it. I don't understand this game. It's it's far too subtle the tactics for me. <clears throat> What what happened there is just beyond me. I don't know. <clears throat> oh boy. Have a take. He's got Bishop E4 check. <laughs> it's just, it's just unreal. It's just unreal. Oh, okay, okay. Take the bishop here. Yeah. It's going to make me if I'm not careful. the game at all I, I want to analyze this I don't I just, I just don't understand the game at all uh, I thought I was just winning a piece here let's have a look at this
Bishop f4. Well, no, knight f4. I thought I was just winning a piece here. But there's there's something very subtle about this position. <clears throat> so I just thought knight takes f3 was winning a piece. Queen takes d5 check. So I was worried about king h8, queen e4. I was trying to avoid that, and that was a bit of a disaster. So already I just go badly wrong with queen f7. Going to plus 2. So I have to play this. Queen e4, hitting f4 and h7. Maybe this was su sufficient g6. Bishop takes f4, queen takes f4. Okay, that should I should have done that. So when I played queen, this is just losing. It's just losing. Because yeah, my back row is just basically weak. If I played king takes, it just takes here. So this is a losing position now. After winning a piece, this is a losing position. King h8 is basically the only move. I have to go in for this. It looks. I think I was worried about something like the queen coming near my king. Here, yeah, I was worried about this. Maybe it's. That's not to be worried about. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. I, I, okay, weird. I, I don't know. I, I thought I was just going to be okay, but okay. Gustav, is this a five minute? Are we playing a five minute? Provoking, trying to provoke stuff. Like F4 is a bit provocative, probably not very good. But if I can get H4, that's okay. Three takes knight f two. Or well, just knight e five for h three. Queen knight e five is dangerous for the moment for h three. Queen h four. Or is that? c5 for knight f3 bishop e5 bishop e5 bishop g3 right queen h5 f4 cd ed takes so queen h5 and this isn't anything stronger i think F four C D E D takes okay. F4, CD, takes, takes, bishop d7 blockade, knight f3, I 
I got a knight of three here. Oh, bishop d7, bishop c6. Uh, do I take on f3 or not? Bishop G four, Bishop D four, Bishop D four, rookie rook D four, Bishop G four for Bishop E five, Bishop E five might be a good idea, Bishop E five. Try and weaken this king. All right, Bishop G four, Bishop E two. Let's check. this Bishop F two. All right, this Bishop E six for a moment. Actually, what was wrong with Rook E four anyway? Why don't I just play Rook E four? <laughs> One. Okay. Okay, a4 just to get this rook around this side. a4 might be okay anyway. Qu bishop e2, there's queen e3, bishop f2, the queen can go back, say to g5. Rook d8 might be good, rook d1, queen d1. Two rooks for the queen. Rook d8 for bishop d4, king h8. Okay, I'll take this d file. There's also a queen e4 check. Rook d1, there's queen e4 check. Right. Okay. <clears throat> if I play rook d6 here. Tempted. Bishop f5. Bishop h3. Bishop e4. Bishop f5. e5. There's rook bishop d3. Bishop e4. Bishop e Bishop h3. Bishop e4. Bishop h3, bishop e4, e5, bishop d3. Don't look at the rating. Look how you can bring the opponent down. Look for their downsides. Don't look at any rating. <coughs> Thanks. <coughs> That's the lesson from that game. Uh, your job is an assassin. It doesn't matter who you're playing. Your job is to be a, a chess assassin. Uh, so just remember that. That's that's the point of that game. Okay. So he's got an astronomical rating. It's kind of off-putting, but if you just focus and you just try and just bring him down. Yeah, that's that's all. That's what you have to do. <coughs> Don't be put off by any ratings. <coughs> if I take on e four here. So C three. All 
or if I take on e6, queen b7, and d7, I think I should take on e6 anyway. Forget about this for a moment. Let me just knight f3. If I just castle and then knight g5. G6, knight e6, knight g5, g6, knight e6. There's, maybe there's a shot, rook f2, rook f2, queen d1. Rook f2, hang on. Queen takes. King h, king f8. I could just play a normal move here to avoid this kind of potential disaster. Sort of knight g5. Okay, rook f2. Rook f2, queen d1 is embarrassing. But does that actually work? Rook f2. There's a bishop f2 as well. There's king h1 on that. Let's imagine rook f2, queen h7, king f8. Check, check. He's got a check there with discovered check. I think a sensible move. I'm going to piece up here. I could just play a sensible move, which doesn't create any theoretical downside. Because if you're a piece up, why create theoretical downsides? So it's just a sensible move to connect up the pieces here. Bishop e3. Right. Another one. This should be much safer. So knight b3, just take out the sting of this bishop. Okay. Ah, okay. I'll take this bishop off, in fact. Let's neutralize the a-file. There's rook f3 for knight e that might be dangerous later. Let's rook f4 as well. That rook g1, knight d4. That's rook f4, queen e3. Okay, I don't think it's that dangerous. Now, so knight, knight d4 coming up. Knight d4. If he if he takes C D, okay. C D. And it's safeguard against rook f three with rook e three. Should be. <laughs> I don't want to move the g pawn. Um, plan this knight going to d6 somehow. How do I get knight to d6? If I e4, I move the queen somewhere. Then knight d2 to e4. If rook d4, there's knight f6 check. So I could do this for knight d2 to e4. And if rook d4, knight f6, queen d4. To go to d6. It's rook g5 there. Maybe h4 to rule out. Rook g5. h4, knight d2. Knight e4. Knight d6. Alright, so I'm like f2 again. <laughs> Right, 
might protect F2 here. Right, so he's ruled out this maneuver, knight d2, he's ruled it out. There's always rook f4 now. Knight Alright, I think this clarifies a, another plan now, this weakening of g5, just h4, knight g5 now. h4, knight g5. Okay, knight g5 here, queen f5, knight e6. Queen e6, queen f4. So I think knight e6 coming in here is a family fork. Well, near near family fork. I'll take the rook here. Okay, I'm going to just go back. And protect. It's over. I don't think I've got too many concerns now. It looks over. All right, thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, but you shouldn't like relax against anyone. That's another little little moral I think. Don't relax against anyone, even if you're a piece up. There's always tactics in the possession which could just turn the tables quite easily. Uh, okay, so let me win. I'm afraid not. <laughs> I'm not as not if I can help it. Okay. <sighs> um Knight G five is probably something to think about. Takes check, takes check, and kings up, ends up there. I think there was some tell game. This reminds me of some tell game. The thing is, is knight g5 necessary? I'm going to use a vast amount of time working out knight g5 here. This might. Why don't I just play a sensible move for a change? I'll, I'll just play a sensible move. I'll just try and play a sensible move without a knight sack or multiple piece sacks. Just, just play a move. Okay. Let's get the pieces out. Get the pieces towards the central squ central squares. is immune because of bishop takes h7 this looks like a position where I can play bishop c2 and queen d3 bishop c2 queen d3 is that too dangerous B4, how plausible is B4 here? A5. Bishop A4, A, B, A, B. There's a knight pin. Maybe just B3 and Bishop B2. Gives rise to knight E5.
bishop b2 and then rearrange my pieces again because it's going to double the rooks and the thing is okay bishop d3 unfortunately there's knight a5 okay hang on a sec there's knight d2 there knight d2 might be sufficient trying to keep a grip on this backward pawn the e5 square in particular this kind of makes sense in this pawn structure try and keep a locking key at e5 although okay I'm losing the exchange am I very good okay I will have to keep that knight to keep that pawn on the defensive here I need b4, knight c4, knight takes, he's going to be ending up winning a piece with c3. And so b4, knight c4 seems absolutely possible. Alright, this position. He's got rook c2 here. Maybe I'll take the bishop. Take the bishop. Take on e6. And he's got this after. This might not be very clever. Okay, doesn't matter. Oh, there's knight b3 now. No, that does matter. Whoops. There goes an exchange. That's bad. <coughs> That's bad. Yeah. I should. <coughs> it's over. Okay. Um. Unpin stuff against rook c1 coming in the future. Unpin stuff in advance. Uh, just get everything off the first rank. Against queen c1. Queen b4, queen f2. Oh, there's queen b7 there, hold on. I protect with king g3, there's knight you've. Um, f3, what about f3? There's queen e1 here. There's knight g3. Rook c2 is dangerous. Bishop c1 after no there's no bishop c1 so he's going for g2 even stop g2 
Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much over. That's it. Well played. Yeah, very good. Uh, cracked up there. That's well played. A lot of pressure on the queen side. Shelling forward. <clears throat> Save the best till last here in this session. 2948. I don't think his rating is high enough. Let's play King's Indian. Uh, have a good result sometimes against Shelling with King's Indian. to take okay this is a familiar scenario from an earlier game the knight's kind of neglected h4 hence this might have some logic to it to make this a bit more effective to play for h4 <laughs> forgetting very familiar to a previous game yeah I'm tempted to sack because it's a blitz game it would need more calculation in a long game, but in a blitz game, knight for two pawns is, is probably quite dangerous. Because fundamentally, I've got a lost position anyway because of the backward d6 pawn. If you don't want a fundamentally lost position, you don't play the king's engine, you play something like the Slav or the Grunfeld. But yeah, fundamentally here, it's pretty bad with the d6 pawn, so you've got to drum up something. On the king side, there's h3 here. Bishop takes, knight takes. Oh, he's got queen takes, protecting h3, right? So I play knight e5. Now for f4, there's bishop g4. h3 is dangerous for queen h4, like in the previous game. It looks a little bit like similar theme. Uh, Knight for two pawns. Hmm. Right. Okay, there is knight f4 on the cards. a4 though on the queen side. Knight f4, queen h7, or should I play g5? g5 looks too weakening. a4 looks like a logical move here. So I'll try and activate this rook. Now queen h8 looks hyper modern. There might be pressure on d4. This might actually be a practical move in some sense against d4. I activate this rook. Knight takes rook d3. h2 check. There's bishop f6 for bishop h4 as well to consider. h2 check I guess doesn't do anything. Can't lose on time here. Let's play this. Thank you. 
right? Bishop h4. Try nab and exchange. Got an active rook on the a file here. There might be some compensation. If I can nab that exchange, okay. Pin that guy for a moment. On oh, this rook d6. I think H2 around here. Queen takes, Queen takes, King takes, Bishop takes, nothing's dropping off. I take on D4, then play H2 check. No. Um, it's rook a3 seems interesting in the circumstance. Right. If I take is I guess it's too dangerous, huh? If I do this, just want to take on B3 here. Maybe rook D8 on E D. I really want to take on B3, but Alright, I want to take that. No, my back is too weak. Now taking, whoa, I'll take this guy out, but then knight g5 is dangerous, and there's queen c5 check, king h2, rook a2 check, I mean he was threatening to take and then rook e8, so let's see knight g5 check, there might not be a check here, this might be dooms. This might be dooms. I think this is doomed. Yeah, check. Yeah, this is looking grim. This is look. This is look. It looks it over. Yep. This looks well and truly, truly uh, resignable. Thanks. Yeah, that was very good, very strong. Uh, okay, um, okay. Just in the last minute, I just want to emphasize. Uh, yeah, um, if you, if you want fifteen percent off, remember it's King's Crusher um, code to play me or other streamers. Hope you enjoyed today, and um, yeah, pretty pretty tough. Thanks really tough session and uh, uh, still got a minute uh, so th there's um, a lot of tournaments coming up which get covered on chess 24 as well so uh, just from, from that point of view just to uh, it's, a, it's a great site to support so uh, um, and I'm not playing tomorrow. No, I, I have uh, one of my friend's birthdays is tomorrow. Birthday party tomorrow. So a uh, chess friend, actually, a fan of Korshnoi. Uh You may know him from uh, uh, YouTube, Fat and Mad. <laughs> so that's why it was scheduled today instead of Sunday, just in case you were wondering. Um, OK, have a good week. See you next week on Sunday. Thanks very much.